Hi guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto was born a low-class devil before the Great Devil War. Realizing how the devil class system subjugated devils of lower class, Naruto will represent his origins as he rises and expose the corrupted system that he lives in, and he'll do it without the high-class devils even realizing it. Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel, and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard. Chapter 13, Date Night. One week later. Naruto's Peerage House. Beep. 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 B. A hand slammed down on the alarm clock, stopping its annoying cry for its owner to wake up. Naruto's eyes slowly opened, revealing his baby blue eyes to the world. Day 5 muttered Naruto to himself. He checked clock and saw that it read 7 a.m., I didn't even wake up once. He sighed and took off his breathing machine. It was the only thing that he needs to sleep at night. He was healthy enough to eat and drink for himself, and he didn't need any more blood donations from the others either. He was progressing, but he had to do some of the work for himself. Naruto, Naruto groaned as he pushed himself up. His arm still hurt from the previous days, but he knew that he needed to train. His body was weak from being trapped in that seal for centuries. If he was going to follow through with his plans, he had to condition himself even better than he was during his war days. The young Bale stood up, wearing only orange shorts, though he did have some trouble doing so. He wasn't using any magic to strength his body. It was a part of his training, after all. Slowly walking past his wheelchair, Naruto opened the door and started his streak down the hall. He grunted a few times whenever his sore feet made contact with the floor. Damn it, he said mentally when he leaned against the wall for support. He took a couple of deep breaths before continuing his walk, ignoring his crying legs as he made his way to the top of the stairs. Okay, Naruto, he whispered to himself, you can do this. Grabbing the sidebar with both hands, Naruto placed his right foot down onto the first stair. After taking a quick break to make sure everything was okay, he quietly made his way down the stairs. It wasn't as hard for him to go down the stairs now that he was supporting a large amount of his weight on his arms, however, the hardest part of walking down the stairs was keeping his balance. He flinched when his right foot hit the side of the wall, stubbing his toe. Growling out in pain, he refocused before making his way down the last few steps. Naruto, Naya? Said a familiar voice. Naruto looked over his shoulder to see Kuroka from the dining room with Kyrio's look in her cat eyes, what are you doing? We would have helped you get out of the bed. I. I wanted to try. He muttered while using the walls for support as he took a few more steps. Kuroka quickly appeared at his side and wrapped one of his arms over her shoulders while wrapping her own arm around his midsection. He silently thanked his protege while they headed into the kitchen where Anna was cooking. She was wearing a blue short and one of Yo's muscle shirts with everything under a pink apron. Good morning. She said nonchalantly, but she did take a few seconds to glance at Naruto from the side of her eyes. Kuroka didn't go upstairs to assist him so she summed up that he left his bed himself. While it was a good sign that his recovery was doing him well, it was also very unsafe for him to be doing tasks like that without someone with him. Good night, he he he. Naruto joked. Both females in the room rolled their eyes his corny joke that he said every morning and every night. Kuroka sat Naruto down in one of the chairs at the table and scooted a seat next to him. You shouldn't have done that. She whispered to him, pulling his body towards her. She moved his head gently so that it was sitting on her breast. Naruto sighed and snuggled into Kuroka's warmth. She purred quietly when he wrapped both of his arms around her stomach and she started playing with his hair, you should have waited for me or Orochimaru to help you. Orochimaru has to work today. He said with a yawn, I didn't want to bother him this morning and I didn't know where you were this morning. You stopped sleeping with me, and I didn't want to yell for someone to help me. Even though what happened with Hao was over a week ago, the new fear that she had for Naruto was still present in her heart. 
The only reason why she could be next to him like she was now was because Anna was in the room with her. When she's alone with Naruto however, the memories of his hostility start to invade her mind. She gripped Naruto a little tighter, I just giving you more space, so you can sleep comfortably, Naya. She lied, I didn't want to wake you up whenever I moved in the bed, so I decided to leave you for a while asleep some somewhere. Okay. He said with another yawn, not noticing that Kuroka was looking down at him with a troubled face, I don't like this. Why am I still scared of him? Everyone else seemed to get over their fear and suspensions of him, but now me? What's wrong with me? The noise of a plate hitting the wooden kitchen table brought Kuroka out of her musing. Anna placed the plate down in front of him the two. The simple meal of eggs and toast was on the plate, with a small container of yogurt that Anna got out of the fridge. She also poured him a glass of milk before focusing back on her cooking. Here you go said Kuroka playfully, grabbing the chopsticks and started to feed Naruto. He didn't have any problems with it at all since his arm still hurt. He chomped down on his eggs slowly, but with eagerness as well. Kuroka giggled at Naruto he flashed a smile at her, his teeth filled with egg bits. Eh? Said the newly arrived Kisame, only wearing his purple boxers, you cook me some? I'm pretty hungry right now. You didn't even say good morning, only focusing on food that I'm not even making for you. Said Anna with a little twinge of anger, either make your own food, or go out and buy it because I'm not making you any. Wow, who gives a fuck? Laughed Kisame, just keep that same energy when we're watching that Sharknado movie I recorded last night. Ha ha ha. I bet that movie is awesome with a title like that. Hello, Kisame. Said Naruto when he swallowed his food, nice to see you, he he he. And it is nice to see you as well. Said Kisame, at least you have the fucking decency to recognize me with kindness instead of stuck up bitchiness. He said. He raised an eyebrow at the position he was in with Kuroka, hold on now, Naruto. Just because she's sexy as fuck doesn't mean you fuck here right here. I'm sure Anna wouldn't have a good time clean up the juices, he he he. Kuroka's face flushed a deep red at Kisame as the images of her and Naruto started to fill her mind while Anna growled at the shark man, forgetting about the eggs that she was making for yo. What are you talking about, Kisame? Asked Naruto innocently. I don't gee, gee, what is this water? Naruto looked up at Kuroka to see that she had a glazed look with half-opened eyelids. The blush on her face was still strong, and she was salivating from her mouth, Kuroka, you're drooling on him dash. SSSHHH. Said Kuroka, putting a finger to Naruto's lips, let me enjoy this right now, Naya. What are you talking about? He asked. She's a woman, so we'll never know, or at least, you won't know, Naruto. Once you get more in tune with the world, you'll get it. Said Kisame as he opened the fridge and stole the cartoon of milk, bottoms up. He yelled before chugging in with ferocity, draining it in seconds. Anna's eyebrow twitched twice in anger. Thirty minutes later. Backyard. Naruto was outside with Lee doing some light stretches to prepare for the day's exercises. Yo and Anna were watching from the sidelines, sitting in lawn chairs. Yo was eating the burnt eggs with comical tears falling from his eyes because Anna forced him to. Naruto was sitting on the ground, reaching for toes. Lee was behind him gently pushing his back down, good job, Naruto-sama. Just a few more seconds like that, and we can start training again. This hurts said Naruto with a depressed tone. His thighs were burning up, and he didn't want to continue this at all. Y-O-S-H. That means it's working. Pain is gain, after all. Shouted Lee as he applied more pressure, pushing Naruto down even further. A loud pop sound reverberated throughout the background when Lee pushed Naruto down. Aha. Naruto's eyes were wide, and he couldn't form words when the pain of his back multiplied by 100. Ouch. Muttered Yo, wincing at the sick sound. Y-O-S-H. Great job. Shouted Lee, now we're ready for 50 push-ups. 550. 
shouted Naruto comically, I can hardly move, and you want me to do fifty? Absolutely. Said Lee. He grabbed both of Naruto's shoulders and pulled him ba back up, his back snapping while doing so. Uh, Lee. That snap didn't sound normal to Yo at all. Why is he my trainer? Cried out Naruto as he rolled over on his stomach. Remember that it's arm day today. Yesterday was leg day, and I see that you're getting used to the pain. So 50 push-ups should help you get used to the pain in your arms while you're fighting. Shouted Lee in excitement, see, I'll do them with you. Should we be helping Naruto-sama, Anna? Yo asked his fiance, who catching a tan. Let them have their fun. It's more peaceful anyway when Lee is dogging down someone else with training practices. She replied. If you say so. He muttered when he threw the rest of the eggs into a bush when Anna wasn't looking. The two continued to watch the duo in silence. Lee was waiting on Naruto finish his push-ups, yelling encouraging words to their master. Naruto was gritting his teeth as he pushed himself from the ground, FF4. He said and dropped back down to the ground. Great job. Four five more to go. If you can't finish it in the next 10 minutes, we'll have to add to them by 200. Lee screamed. Why did I add you in my peerage again? Muttered Naruto as pushed himself up again, this shit is crazy. Oh, so you're going to quit? Asked Lee. Never. He answered quickly, I'll never quit. Believe it. Yo shuffled in his seat uncomfortably as he took a quick glance at Anna. She was wearing sunglasses, so he couldn't see her eyes. He tapped his fingers on the armrest of his chair, before switching to whistling. Anna ignored his obvious attempt to get her attention, and continued to bake under the sun peacefully. Ugh hi hi hi. Groaned out Yo, rolling onto his stomach and curling into a ball, his back facing Anna, it's so boring. Anna twitched twice. What do you want? She said suddenly. Yo rolled over to Anna. What do you mean? I didn't ask for anything. He glanced away from her when she turned her head to him. Even though she was wearing sunglasses, he could still feel her heated glare directed at him. Whenever you, you want my attention, you do stupid stuff to get me to talk to you. She answered, so just tell me what you want so I can deny it. I mean, you're kinda right. He mumbled, you probably wouldn't care anyway, so I'll just, you know. He rolled back over, facing away from Anna. What do you want, yo? I'm not asking again. She said. He was quiet for a while, so Anna was about to zone him out and focus on her tanning, but he finally spoke up, I wanted to go on a date with you tomorrow. Anna stared at his back, noticing that his arms weren't tensed up anymore, I know that we haven't felt, I don't know what word to use, maybe, comfortable, yeah, it hasn't been comfortable between us since we had our argument. I just wanted to patch things up again. He mumbled. The silence between them was tense. Yo was waiting for an answer from Anna, but all that he heard was the shouts of pain from Naruto and Lee's encouraging words. He sighed, believed that he had failed in his pursuit to restore his relationship with his fiance, but his ears perked up when he heard Anna speak, I agree. She said, I don't like it when we aren't talking. I hate it when we're quiet in bed, waiting for the other person to say something. I want everything to be natural between us, like how it used to be. So, you'll go? Asked a hopeful yo as he turned back towards his fiancé, you'll go out with me tomorrow? Yes. She said quietly. A full grin grew on yo's face and he tried to hug Anna, but a kick to his ribs stopped him as he curled up in pain but that's it. I want to sit down with you and talk while eating good food. Nothing more than that. Nothing more? You mean dash you'll notice the light blush on Anna's cheeks, oh? Uh, yeah. We don't have to do that. I just want to be able to hug you again at night because you're warm dash. Of course. She said while rolling her eyes. And because I love you. He finished. Anna's breath hitched slightly at his words. She couldn't look him in the eye, 
so she turned away from the younger Asakura so he wouldn't see her heated face, you know that, right? He asked. Yes. I love you too. Click. Phew, got that on record. Said Yo as he pressed the screen on his phone, I'll just make that your ringtone for whenever you call me. You were recording me. Growled out Anna. Yo smiled evilly and pressed the reply button. Yes. I love you too. Anna eyebrow twitched a few times in anger. Later that day. Student council room. Sona was marching her way to her office during lunch. The heiress of the Citri clan was uncharacteristically behind on her work these days, because she was spending a lot of her time with Naruto, listening to his stories of the war and training with him. She was fully invested into the man, her respect she held for him grew every time she saw him. He was like a walking library of untold stories for Sona, and she wanted to hear everything. While it was slightly annoying that he would come to their training sessions already tired from his daily training, she knew that he wasn't fit like how he described himself in the past and had to take the time to get himself back up to speed. She winced when she remembered that Lee was the one over Naruto's training. After the beating he gave Rias in her peerage, along with the fight with Serord that happened weeks ago, she knew that the young marital artist was a training addict and anyone would suffer under his tutelage. The student council president opened the door to her office and saw that someone was already in there. Her neutral face grew a small frown once she noticed that it was Hao was sitting in one of the couches in the room. His back was to her, so he didn't see her, but Sona didn't want to speak to the Asakura. Anyone who would try to kill their, their, king, over ignorant and selfish reasoning wasn't a friend in Sona's book. Nevertheless, she closed the door behind her and walked towards her desk, not even saying a word to him. She noticed that he was sipping on some red wine from a wine glass. She could tell that he wasn't drunk or anything, otherwise, he wouldn't be sitting so calmly. Are you done analyzing me? He asked once Sona sat down in her chair. The female Citri answered, I wouldn't have to do that if you were to just be a reasonable person. How gave her a weak smile, but I'm not a reasonable person, Sona. I have my own demons that I need to take care of. And the way to take care of them is by killing your own king? She snapped back, are you honestly saying that you're the victim in this situation? No, I'm not. He answered smoothly, not even concerned that she raised her voice at him, I'm not the victim, but I'm not the bad guy everyone else has painted me as. I don't want to hear your cry for pity. She said, you don't deserve my forgiveness or anyone else's, especially your peerage members. I can't even fathom of sleeping in the same house as my attempted murderer. They must treat you like an outsider. How didn't answer her, which internally surprised her. She took a closer look at his face when she went to push her glass back on her nose, and it seemed like how actually looked sad. He had a frown on his face, not an angry one, but a sad one. His whole demeanor seemed as if he was battling with the guilt inside of him. I don't care about anyone else other than Naruto-sama, Yo, and Anna. Whatever the rest of them think wouldn't affect me at all. I've met you brother once before. Said Sona. How seemed interested and listened as she continued talking, he was the one that invited my, my peerage and I to your fight. He appeared behind me and I tried to attack him because I thought he was an assailant, but he suddenly appeared in the middle of this room. Yo is probably the fastest person you will ever meet. How said with a chuckle, he likes to run from problems due to his lazy attitude. I guess that mindset translated into his speed, because whenever I want him to do something for me, he disappears and I can't follow him. He finished with a laugh. The edge of Sona's frown twitched a little. She didn't want to, but how seemed nicer when talking about his brother, so she continued with the subject, you two must be close. It's complicated between us. He answered after taking a sip of his wine, yo had to deal with me during the crazy phase, and I really hurt him, apparently. However, no matter what I did, he always defended me. When I joined Naruto-sama's peerage, yo joined right after, his main reasoning was that he wanted to thank Naruto-sama for saving me. I don't deserve someone like him. And what about the other girl that I saw holding Yo's hand during the fight? 
If I remember from the rating game you all had against Serard, her name was Anna. Said Sona. Anna is Yo's fiancé, also Naruto-sama's other, bishop, like me. He answered, she's a kind girl. She hides behind that menacing persona of hers, but all she wants is to be near Yo. She joined Naruto-sama's peerage just because Yo did. That's actually interesting. I'd like to have a conversation with her about her shamanic powers. It's a dying culture, so meeting one is very rare. Said Sona. That is, if you can get her to talk to you. Anna's very closed off. She's scared of meeting new people because she's scared that they'll fear her for her powers. I will never understand how Yo convinced her to be his wife, but they have each other. I could die happily now that I know Yo has her. He said with a rare smile. Sona made sure to burn the image of how smiling into her memory. Even though she was supposed to hate this man, she couldn't help but find him very attractive. She kept her blush down and crossed her arms over her chest while leaning back into her chair, while that is nice, it doesn't explain why you're here. You came into my office unannounced, for what has seemed like the tenth time, and you haven't given me what I wanted. Which is? He asked. An apology. How sighed, I feel bad about what I did, but apologize. That's not me. He said with a laugh before taking another sip of his wine. Then I guess we can't have our usual conversations ever again, because I won't speak to you again unless you apologizing. It isn't hurting me either way, since I can go to Naruto-sama for information and training. You've seemed to have built a relationship with my master. Said how? She nodded, he's very interesting. I've heard his stories many times of the war. He is truly a war hero that should be respected. I don't understand why his name isn't mentioned a lot in books that I've read concerning the war. It's like he's faded away from history, and it makes me mad that he isn't given the respect and honor he deserves. How laughed, causing the Citri to raise an eyebrow at him, it's just, you sound a lot like how I did when he told me his stories of the past. Your smile reminds me of the same smiles I once had. Don't you try to go out and enjoy yourself? I know it must be a pain living in a house with so many people, but don't you have a connection with your peerage members other than your brother and his fiancée? She asked. I do, I don't know how to describe my feeling for them. He answered honestly, honestly, thinking about Kisame, Lee, Orochimaru, and Kuroka, they are all annoying, but I've gotten used to it. I enjoy our arguments, even though I don't show it on the outside, the common argument of who gets the remote for the night. I sometimes look forward to that. You all fight over the television remote? Sona had to hold back a laugh. She couldn't imagine someone as stoic as how fighting with others over such a measly thing, what happened to hating human inventions? Whoever made the television was a human that surpassed other humans. He was a godsend to this world filled with ignorance. How said with a chuckle, to explain the TV situation, my master only put one television in-house, which is located in the living room. That would force us to get together and watch. The overall goal was to make us bond during the time that Naruto-sama was away. Can you explain that to me? She said with curiosity, I've met with him a few times over the course of this week, but he hasn't explained to me why he was sealed. The only thing he's told me is that the higher-up devils didn't like him. I want to understand him more. If he hasn't told you yet, it's because there is a reason to it. He said, Naruto-sama is very crafty. However, I must say that he's taken an interest in you. The only people he's really invested his time with like the way he's doing now is with his peerage members and he say. I feel honored that I have his attention. He's somebody I can look up to. And you should. Said how as he stood up from his seat, well, I've said what I've wanted to say. I guess I won't get that apology? She asked with a small smirk. No, because I'm not that type of person. He may have beaten me in combat, in some weird way I may add, but he didn't beat the arrogance out of me. I'm still the same guy, I just got my ass beat. He said with a shrug. So you... You would try to kill Naruto-sama again if you had the opportunity? She asked, her smirk long gone in replace of a frown. 
No. I won't do that ever again. He said with a sigh, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. That was the man that gave me a new outlook on life, and I forsake him. One thing for sure, that punishment was hellish. It was hard just to breath in the state I was in. When my punishment was over, all he did was touch my forehead and the pain went away. It took some time for my body to recover fully, but I was glad that shit was over with. Humph, glad you learned your lesson, even if it was a little extreme for my taste. She said, pushing up her glasses. He did put the fear of God in me, that's for sure. He chuckled, even if he is weakened, I still feel like that he could win against a fight with me in some type of way. Plus, Kuroka wouldn't let me get close to him anyway. His, queen? Kuroka the Nikomata? That's the one. He said, that girl, she's really strong. I can feel it. I wouldn't stand a chance against her. Are you sure? I didn't feel any magic from her when I saw her during your fight. She said. Beings with a lot of power tend to be able to control it better concealing their magic from others. I'm not saying that she's as powerful as a Satan or anything, but she has the potential to. Remember, she was the only one that noticed Naruto-sama's illusion. She's strong. If you say so. The Citriaris muttered. Well, even though you may not trust me, I want out alliance to continue again. He said, I've missed out conversations. I want to look forward to them again. I still haven't gotten my apology. She said with a smile. You'll get it if you allow me to be your ally. How said with a cocky smile. You're really not in the position to bargain. She said with a smile similar to How's. True, but I know you'll accept it anyway. He countered with a laugh. She rolled her eyes at him, but she couldn't help but smile a little more. More. Sure, now my apology she demanded playfully. How smirked at her and summoned a magic seal underneath him, I'll see you soon, Sona. And disappeared. Time skip, after school. Cardio. Cardio. Oh how I love cardio, sang out yo. He was running with his usual orange headphones over his head, weights cuffed around his wrist and ankles, down his usual running path. Why, Huff, why are yo, you sing that terrible song. Groaned out his, king, who was trying to catch up with Yo. It was part of the day where Naruto would join Yo on his daily jog which would help him build back up his muscle and stamina he lost over the years. Oh, I hate that song. Anna makes me sing it so it can motivate me to finish my jog. Said Yo, finishing up on the last stretch of their run, but I'm very happy today. Kawasiya wa wo yuzi I got a date, date date. I got a date, date, date. Sang the, night. Oh. Groaned out Naruto who was struggling to keep the distance between the two at a minimum, well good for you. When they finally reached the entrance of Kuo Academy, Naruto dropped down on the ground and huffed for air. My, my L legs. He said in between his gasp for breath. You'll get used to it. Said yo, eyeing some of the student that was leaving school grounds. School ended about 20 minutes ago, but there were a few more students left that were lazing around. They all looked at Naruto weirdly, wondering why he was so thin, and if he had any decency. Yo was about to help his master up, but the sound of swords clashing reached his ears, causing him to check his surroundings. Naruto wasn't focused on the distant sword battle, rather, he was trying to get his, knight's attention but failing to do so. You do hear that, right? He asked his master. Hear the swords? Yeah, but I don't care about that. Help me up. Shouted Naruto, falling back onto the ground when his knees buckled under his weight. Yo pulled Naruto up and allowed him to use him as a crutch. Let's walk to that alleyway so no one can see us. I'll teleport us to that noise. Said Yo, leading Naruto to the alleyway he was talking about. After reaching the alleyway, the two teleported behind the old schoolhouse, the same place where Yo claimed he heard the noise. Naruto summoned his wheelchair and sat in it. Using his powerful magic, Naruto made a small ice walkway for his wheels to roll on while Yo pushed him. 
The two made their way through the trees for a while until they made it to the clearing directly behind the old school house. There, they saw both Issei and Kiba fighting against two girls dressed in tight, black bodysuits and were armed with swords. What's going on here? Said Naruto in confusion. Na Naruto-sama? Said Issei, surprised at his sudden entrance. He quickly brought his attention back to his fight and ducked under a sword swipe that would have cut of his head. Ops. Sorry. I thought you were focusing on the fight. Said the brown-haired girl that Issei was fighting. Gah. Yelled Kiba in pain when he was kicked to the other side of the clearing. That was boring. Said the blue-haired girl that kicked Kiba, you aren't that strong. His form was flawed as well. Said Yo, catching the attention of the blue-haired girl and her partner, he's quick on his feet, but he doesn't have a lot of power in his strikes. Are you all right, Kiba? Asked Rias when she went over to check on him, but he shrugged her off in anger and started to walk towards Yo. I can handle myself, especially against holy swords. Your appearances, appearances just distracted me. Kiba said with anger in his voice. No, I can assume from the large crater in the ground that she was the one that did it with her big sword, said Yo, pointing to Kiba's opponent, and I can tell that you were losing before I arrived by the scuff marks on your clothes and your injuries. You lost because she was stronger than you, period. Yo said with a lazy yawn. Zenovia, the victor between her and Kiba, looked at Yo with interest, you seem to be very analytical and wise. You must be strong yourself. Eh, I'm just a guy who wishes he was sleeping right now. Said Yo with a wave, dismissing Zenovia's claim, can we go home now, Naruto-sama? I don't know, his may turn out to be fun, he hey. Laughed out Naruto with a closed-eye smile. Forgive us, Naruto-sama. We were just having a practice match with these followers of the church. Said Rias. It's all right. Practice is good. Practice is good. I just wish I had someone of that popcorn stuff that we eat when we watch movies. Said the bale. Who are you two? Asked Zenovia. The fighting between Irina, the other girl, and Issei ceased once they noticed everyone's attention was elsewhere. My name is Naruto Bale and this is my knight, Yoasakura. Naruto introduced. Hi. Said Yo with a wave. So, you're devils as well? That's odd. We were only informed that the Gremory and Citri were stationed here. Said Zenovia. We moved in about two and a half months ago, so we're still new to the area. Explained Naruto. Well then, I shall inform you that we are here to look for holy swords, and we don't want any disturbances from the devil population here in Kuo. Said Zenovia. Okay. Naruto said plainly. If we have to, we'll use force to. Did you just agree? She said with confusion. Ah, uh, Naruto looked up at Yo in confusion and all he got from him was a shoulder shrug, yeah, I mean, I'm not the one over this territory anyway. You'll have to talk to Rias or Sona for that. We just live here. Zenovia looked back at her partner in confusion before focusing back on Naruto, well then, I thank you for being understanding. Said Zenovia, but there is something that I'd like to request from you. And that is? Asked Naruto with curiosity. I want a battle with your knight. Dot. Said Zenovia while pointing to Yo. Yo wasn't even focused with the conversation being held, finding the orange butterfly that was floating around more interest. However, his ears did pick up on his name. Eh, did you say something? He asked. Everyone's sweat dropped at the lazy, night's lack of interest. I said I wanted to battle you here and now. Demanded Zenovia, pointing her very large sword at Yo with ease. Maybe I don't want to. Yo said with a yawn, listen, I need to go make some reservations at a restaurant soon so I see a. I don't care. Stated Zenovia, walking towards Yo and Naruto, you've caught my interest, and I want to do battle with you. Before she could get to close, Yo and Issei flew in front of Zenovia, blocking her from reaching Naruto, I believe that you should leave now and go handle your church business. 
I don't want you here on my school grounds any longer. Demanded Yo, his lazy demeanor long gone. Issei summoned his boosted gear, I've been meaning to practice with my new form anyway. Step any closer, and I'll give it a test run on you. You guys are so tense. Laughed Naruto, Issei, you won't be testing your balance breaker today, but you will soon so keep that energy up. Both Irina and Zenovia perked up at Naruto's words, he can activate balance breaker? So, he was just playing with Irina slash me? Are you sure, Naruto-sama? Asked Rias. Naruto laughed and pushed himself past Issei and Yo, now facing Zenovia. I'm sure you can finish things here real quick. Right, Yo? Do I have to? Moaned out Yo. If you don't, I'll tell Anna on you. Yo sighed in defeat and sulked onto the pseudo battlefield. All I want to do is make reservations. He cried out. He'll fight you, but be careful. Said Naruto with a smile. I don't need a devil's concern. Stated Zenovia as she followed Yo. Irina inched closer to Naruto before introducing herself. Hi. My name is Irina Shidu. Nice to meet you. She said with a happy smile. Naruto's smile matched her own as he shook hands with the girl, Naruto Bale. Very nice to meet you. Has anyone told you recently that you have lovely hair? Your master doesn't seem like the serious type. He seems more like an idiot to me. Said Zenovia, observing Irina and Naruto make small talk. He isn't the serious type, but he's not an idiot. He's just happy. Said Yo with a smile. However, that smile changed into a frown as he stared at the blue-haired swordswoman, but do we have to do this? I really need to get home and make some reservations. You can do that later. Call out your sword now and fight me. Shouted Zenovia. Yo sighed and summoned his sword, haven't swung Harasame in a long time. Is that your sword's name, she asked. Yup. A friend of mine gave it to me a long time ago. He said with a small smile, so are you ready because I really need to go make those reservations. I'll finish you quickly then. She stated. That's a heavy sword you have there. Said Yo. My holy sword, Durandal, is heavy and its weight would interfere with most swordsman wielding abilities. However, I've been trained to handle it. She yelled while dashing towards an uninterested Yo. When she was near him, Zenovia slashed at Yo, intending to slice him in half. Yo simply ducked up the swipe and poked Zenovia with his sword, boom. You just died. Humph. Zenovia jumped away from Yo. She rubbed the side of her stomach, the same place that Yo poked at. He didn't cut her, but he could have easily left a fatal blow, you could have killed me. You kill killed yourself. Said Yo, walking towards Zenovia, you can handle that sword well, but you are slow, slower than most, knights. You're basically a rook with a sword. I can tell that your style of fighting is counters, using your sword's destructive capabilities to catch your opponent off guard when they're trying to attack and finish it with one hit. I don't even have to be stronger than you to win. I just have to be quicker. Explained the Asakura twin. Don't use devil terms to determine my strength. Shouted Zenovia while raising her sword over her head, intending to slam it into the ground to create a shockwave. Yo blitzed in front of Zenovia before she could even continue with the motion and kicked her into a tree, you are really slow. If you continue this pointless fight, you'll run out of stamina quickly. I've dealt with those who are quick on their feet. Said Zenovia, ignoring the pain in her back, this is just another training session to me. Eh. Zenovia picked up Yo's voice from behind her and quickly turned her head to it. She saw Yo on his phone, totally uninterested in the fight, what was the number to that restaurant? What? Zenovia said mentally, focusing back on the spot Yo was previously at. There was another Yo there, but he seemed to be fading in the light and after image? You just died again. Zenovia felt the tip of Yo's sword rubbing against her spine, that's twice girly. You are not a cat. You do not have nine lives. 
Whoa. Muttered Issei, I didn't know that Yo was so cool. He doesn't even seem interested in the fight. Muttered Kaneko. It is boring. Said Naruto, his head leaning into his palm, I thought there would be laser beams and rocks flying everywhere. I want my money back. It's not my fault, Naruto-sama, said Yo while ducking a swipe from Zenovia, she's just so slow. I don't even need to fight back. Zenovia growled in anger and tried to pierce Yo, but he spun around the sword swiftly and grabbed Zenovia's left ankle and lifted her off the ground. The young church follower fell flat on her face and dropped her sword. Zenov Zenovia! shouted Irina, running up to her friend to make sure she was okay. I'm done with this, whatever this is. Said Yo, recalling his sword into a magic circle, you're too cocky for your own good. Yo passed by Kibo while on his streak back to his master, and that's how you handle a holy sword's user. You're welcome. Kiba gritted his teeth, feeling like a fool. He was thrown around like a ragdoll during his fight with Zenovia, but Yo was bored of the whole thing. Kiba clenched his fist before disappearing with a magic seal, wanting to release his rage somewhere else. He seems mad. Said Naruto with a laugh, Welp, can't help that. I want to go home. Will you all be coming with us? He asked Kaneko, Akino, Asia, and Rias. Era, I'll come to watch, Naruto-sama. I feel a bit lazy today. Said Akino with a smile. I shall come. I still need help with my power of destruction. I hope that you can help me with it. Said Rias with a bow. Eeh, I'm hungry. Issei said nonchalant, causing his peerage members sweat drop, I think I'll go get something to eat first before coming over. I know Anna, Kisame, and how don't like it when I eat food from the fridge. Sure, come by any time. Naruto turned his attention back to the church followers. Zenovia was back on her feet and retrieved Durandal from the ground and Irina was making sure that she was okay, I guess you all can leave now. You have a mission to succeed in, right? Yes, we'll be taking our leave. It was nice meeting you, Mr. Naruto. Irina said with a wave. Zenovia didn't say anything to the devils, only glaring at Yo who was flipping through the contacts through his phone. What was that restaurant's number again? Yo mumbled again. Zenovia huffed, angry that her opponent didn't even care for her. The two church followers left the scene, leaving the devils to themselves. You guys ready? Asked Naruto, summoning a magic circle beneath him and Yo. Yes, sir. Those that following him. Naruto smiled to himself before disappearing with Yo. Rias and her female peerage members disappeared, disappeared with them, leaving Issei to his own devices. Naruto's peerage house. Backyard. Make the water move faster. Shouted Kisame, was laying on the ground. I'm trying. Muttered Sona who was sweat a lot, it's too big to control. IT's too big to control. Mocked Kisame, wanna know the last time I heard those same words. A bitch couldn't fit my balls in her mouth. Now add more magic into the water serpent and make it faster. He shouted. Sona gritted her teeth and summoned a large, blue magic seal in front of her. A huge water serpent was summoned from it but it imploded on itself after a few seconds. The Styriaris dropped to her knees and took in deep breaths of air. Her glasses fell from her face and landed in the puddle beneath her. Kisame rolled over to Sona on the grass, not caring that his black robe now had grass stains on it. You suck. He said simply. Sona glared at Kisame from the corner of her eye, but he brushed it off easily, if you want to be a master at water magic, but can't handle making simple spells even stronger, then I think you should go back to fucking Devil Day Care and learn more about magic. Kisame isn't holding back on her, huh? Said Naruto, watching the scene between them. She needs to break out of that traditionalist mindset. She believes that spells have a certain amount of magic in order from them to work. She's not stretching the limit. Said Yo. I can actually understand where she's coming from. 
said Rias with a sigh, everyone in Naruto-sama's peerage are slave drivers. True, said Tsubaki, Sona's queen. She was sitting in a nearby lawn chair, watching her king train, but I guess that's why they're all so strong. Strong. Sona wants to be the same so she's putting in the work. However, Mr. Kisame has a very cruel way of encouraging her. When I say lame, you say I am. Lame. Sigh, do I really have to? Didn't I just tell you to? Asked Kisame with a glare, this is your punishment because you're the heiress of the Citri clan, but you can hardly push more magic into a basic spell. Lame. I am. Muttered Sona. Hee hee. Kisame's funny. Naruto said while pushing himself to them, Sona, you're not lame, you're just young. It'll come in due time. I don't know how to do it, Naruto-sama. It's like trying to fit water into a water bottle that's already full. She complained. Well go get another bottle then. Said Naruto, you're used thinking a certain type of way, Sona. Magic is the power of imagination. Just go with it, and it'll happen over time. If you say so. She said hesitantly. Just because he's here doesn't mean that you get off. He left me in charge over your training, so get back to it before Samehei devours you. Shouted Kisame. His sword started to crack a evil, causing Sona to shiver in fear of it. Why yes sir. She stuttered. Kaneko was standing off to the side, watching Sona train along with Rias, Asia, and Akino silently. Her sights were set on Naruto, who was watching Kisame yell at Sona with a childlike smile. She tilted her head to the side in interest. Naruto was a person that she couldn't understand. He seemed like a nice person, but his personality could switch in an instant. The ki he was releasing during his fight with how frightened her, but now, she can hardly feel his magical outage. It was almost like he wasn't even there. Keep Naya? Said a familiar voice from behind her. The three devils looked behind them to see Kuroka with a tray of cookies in her left hand, and Anna didn't make them, but I'm taking the credit anyway, Nyaya. Rias and Akino slowly stepped in front of Kaneko, blocking Kuroka from her, we're good. Said Rias, watching the cat girl carefully. She didn't like Kuroka even though she had a good relationship with her, King. Kaneko was still wary of her sister, so she would defend her until further notice. We all know that's a lie, Naya. Kuroka said calmly. She placed the tray on the ground and walked by the group, headed towards Naruto, enjoy, she said with a wave. You handled that well. Said Naruto, watching the encounter from the corner of his eye, I thought you would have jumped at those two for blocking your way to your little sister. I was thinking about it, but I didn't want to cause a scene and make things worse said the older Nakomata, plus, Chiron doesn't need me anymore. She has her own family now. If she doesn't want me around, I'm not going to force myself on her. Whenever she wants to talk, I'll be here. That's very grown up of you. Why are you taking your time her? I can just tell Rias to let you two talk. Asked Naruto. Because she doesn't need me, plus I'm needed elsewhere. Naruto raised an eyebrow in interest, where? With you, Naya. She said softly, her golden orbs gleaming in the sun as she looked at Naruto in the eyes, I need to be with you. What? Naruto was actually at a loss of words, something that Kuroka has never witnessed before. She was actually surprised that he was surprised. However, she kept her thoughts to herself as he continued to speak, but. I mean, as she's your sister. Don't you think that she's more important than me? She is my sister, but over these past few years, I've been learning to let her go. I'm not going to stop loving her, Naya, but she doesn't need me. As of now, she doesn't even want me to be her sister. So, I'm giving her the space she needs. My main focus right now is helping you recover so you can accomplish whatever plans I know you have in your brain, Naya. She finished with a cute laugh. I, I'm first? He muttered quietly, as if he was scared of the answer. Of course. Of course. 
You know, Naruto, even though you care for your peerage members more than yourself, you're actually a selfish person, Nyaya, she laughed. W8. I didn't mean. It's all right. She interrupted, you've been deprived of love for a long time, so I understand. You are first in my life, Naya. If it wasn't for you, I don't know where I'd be right now. The Nekisha said with a soft smile. I. I will want to go to sleep. He stuttered. Are you sure? It's not even that late in the afternoon yet, Naya. Said Kuroka. I'm sure. I'm tired from my exercises with Lee and Yo. My body hurts and I want to recover in bed. He stated quickly. If you say so. I'll just tell Kisame about it first. Said Kuroka. Naruto kept quiet, confusing the neck issue a little, but she kept her thoughts to herself and made her way to Kisame Hey Sharky. Naruto said that he wants to go to sleep so I'm going to help him, Naya. Guess I've got to cut this training session short. Said Kisame, all right, go lay the cripple down. Hey, Citri Fowler. Kisame's yelling caught Sona's attention, Naruto's about to go to sleep, so we'll have to end it here today, which really isn't that much of a loss seeing as you're not going anywhere in your training. Sona couldn't bark back at Kisame because she was too tired to do so. She just ignored him and focused on gathering her lost breath. All right, take him up. Said Kisame, seeing that he wasn't going to get a response from Sona. Kuroka nodded and made her way back to the silent Naruto. Are you all right? She asked. I am, I want to walk back. He said. Kuroka nodded and helped him stand up from his wheelchair. His legs instantly buckled when they had to hold Naruto's weight, but Kuroka caught him and, and held him up. He quietly thanked him and took his first step, wincing at the pain he was still feeling from the day's exercises. Take your time. Kuroka whispered in his ear, you don't need to rush. I'm here, Naya. Thanks. He said while taking another step. The two continued, ignoring how everyone was staring at them, even Kisame. Kuroka, who was usually outspoken and lazy, didn't seem like the person to be patient with anybody. Even though Naruto needed help, it was confusing to see Kuroka care for someone so much. That's cute. Rias whispered to Akino, who smiled in agreement. They all jumped a little when Naruto faltered a little bit, but Kuroka still stuck with him, holding him up and allowing him to push forward. The king and queen duo made their way past Akino, Rias, and Kaneko as if they weren't even there, only focusing on entering the house and continuing their streak forward. Kaneko was watching the whole time, taking in the sight of her older sister helping her, King. It confused the young Nekishu because Kuroka didn't seem to be mad with the power of Senjutsu. She seemed to really care for Naruto. She didn't sense any evil intent from Kuroka, nor did she even feel afraid of her when she was tending to Naruto. It was like she was genuinely worried for him. Weird. She said mentally. I'll never understand that man. Just teleport to your fucking room. Shouted Kisame, destroying the quiet, peaceful atmosphere, over here trying to show off and shit. Bitch I can walk just fine, thank you very much. You know, you are a very disrespectful person. Said Sona in annoyance, you shouldn't be talking about Naruto-sama like that. I'll talk to him however I feel like it. You just need to worry about how to make a simple fucking water spell more advanced. Naruto has patience for this shit, but I don't. So as long as he leaves your training in my hands, I better see some progress soon or else I'll just lead you to it by yourself. Scoffed Kisame. You should be a little bit nicer, Mr. Kisame. Said Rias with a kind smile. Listen, Mrs. HIV. Wait a second, you're not Mrs. HIV. That's the other black-haired girl over there. He said while pointing towards Akino, well, I'll have to come up with a nickname for you later, but I don't do nice. Just that damn simple. Said Kisame while scratching his butt, oh, Wedgie. I don't see why Naruto-sama doesn't try to get professional help. 
said Sona, ignoring Kisame, he needs all the help he can get and he deserves it. He should be admitted into my sister's hospital. Hey, do me a favor and don't mention your bitch of a sister around me. Barked Kisame. Excuse me. Shouted Sona uncharacteristically, what did you just call my sister? I called her a bitch, and you heard me say it the first time. Don't say your bitch of a sister's name around me, you get that, Mrs. STD? Said Kisame with a roll of his eyes. I will not take any more disrespect from you any longer. Shouted Sona, you are a despicable person, only caring for yourself and no one else. I don't see why Naruto-sama would even revive a person like you. You're just a dumb demon that shouldn't even be here right now. Now. You know, if it was any day out of the week, I would have killed you by now. Said Kisame. A quick wave of KI filled the area, before disappear as quickly as it came, I just don't feel like finishing you off. Maybe it's because your boring training session just made me tired. I don't know, but just know that I would have killed you just for what you said about me, so be grateful that luck and my tiredness is on your side. You can't kill me. Spat Sona, I'm the. I swear to fucking God, if you say you're the Styriaris, I will fucking kill you very slowly. Growled out Kisame. Sona shuddered as another wave of KI filled the atmosphere, along with Rias and her peerage members, you so fucking stupid. You think you're special because of that, that title? Heiress of the Citri? Ha! You don't even know how shady your family really is. Sona was caught off guard, wh what does that even mean? Eh hey, ha 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 ha. Oh boy, I can't wait for the fireworks show to start. Laughed Kisame as a teleportation seal appeared below him, time to go buy some popcorn. And he disappeared. What does he mean? Asked Sona. She turned towards Rias, who looked away at Sona in shame. Her actions caused Sona to narrow her eyes in suspension, do you know something, Rias? I do. She muttered quietly. Akino put a comforting hand on her shoulder, showing her support. What is it then? Asked the Citri again. You'll figure it out soon enough. I'm going through some mental battles myself because of new revelations of my parents. That actually worried Sona somewhat. She has known Rias as a person who would always believe in her parents. They were like her best friends. So, for her to have distrust between her parents, whatever was troubling her must be big. She just hoped that it wasn't as big as she was assuming it to be. Suddenly, Anna stepped out from the sliding door, does anyone know who took my cookies out of? Kaneko turned to Anna, whose face was filled with crumbs as she was stuffing her mouth with chocolate chip cookies, the same ones that Kuroka left for them earlier. Ops. Kaneko said with her usual monotone voice. Anna's eyebrow twitched three times in anger. Naruto's room. The door Naruto's room was slowly pushed open by Kuroka. Naruto's breathing was quickening because of the energy he was running through just to stay awake. His legs were trembling, and he felt nauseous. I guess we overworked you today, Naya? Said Kuroka, helping him to his bedside. A all week. He muttered, I've been tea trying to get back on, my own two feet. I feel my muscle memory kicking in, but it's coming in slower than I thought. It'll be all, all right, Naya. We're here for you. Said Kuroka with a purr. Thanks, but I need to be healed. Soon. He stated seriously, I know you've sensed some other beings with magic in this town. Something is going to happen soon. And we'll handle it, Naruto. Just go to sleep and we'll take care of the rest, Naya. She said. He sighed and nodded, taking off his shorts and kicking off his shoes. Kuroka assisted him with taking his pants off and replacing them with the orange shorts he liked so much. Using her arm, she lowered Naruto's head slowly until it was prompted up safely by his pillow, I need her. Kuroka stopped her actions and looked at Naruto in confusion, who, Naya? Gabriel. Oh. Quarka muttered quietly, what can she do? 
Gabriel Strong and her divine powers may be able to heal me. I don't know if they work on all beings or just angels, but it's worth the shot. Said Naruto, closing his eyes and letting the comfort of his bed take over him. What about that other girl in Rias Peerage, Asia Argento? Her healing capabilities are amazing even though she's a newbie devil. She said. She's too weak to heal something like this. Her magic reserves are too small. I'd rather place my chips on Gabriel. Plus, I haven't seen her in a while. I miss her, he he he. He laughed weakly. Kuroka gritted her teeth but she didn't say anything. She lifted the cover over Naruto's and made sure everything was okay before making her way out of the room. Kuroka. The Nekishu's breath hitched when she heard her name. She turned back around to see Naruto smiling, even though it was a little weak since he was ti tired from his training, I thank you for your words today. I needed to hear that. I'm glad I know where your loyalties are, and I'll be sure to do the same for you when I've fully recovered. She smiled at him and nodded before leaving him in his room. She closed the door behind her and stood there for a while, her mind running ramped with thoughts. She placed her back to the door and slowly slid down it until she was on the floor. Kuroka brought her knees up and wrapped her arms around them, not even caring she was flashing her underside to whoever may walk up to. Her body trembled as her mind felt like it was at battle with itself. I don't know if I should be happy or mad. She whispered to herself. The next day. Yo opened his eyes up and yawned, stretching his arms outwards while doing so. He smiled when he noticed the weight on his chest, Anna, shuffle slightly at his stretching. She woke up too and gave a fiancé a quick kiss on the lips, good morning. Good morning. He said with widest grin. Why are you smiling like that? She asked. Because today's our date. I'm looking forward to it. He said while hugging her. Hum. She hummed into his chest and let him embrace her. What about the reservations? Hum? He said. The reservations. Oh shit. Sigh, yo, you didn't forget. Please tell me you didn't forget. I didn't forget. I just put it to the side of my mind and left it there. So, you didn't make the reservations at the restaurant? No. Yo, I bought a new kimono for me to wear for this date. I'm going to wear it today, do you understand me? I understand fully. Look, I'll just call them now. You better hope that they're open. Yo reached over to his phone and called up the restaurant. Hello, this is Aronia de Takazawa. How may I help you? Uh, yes, my name is Yoasakura, and I'd like to make a reservation for tonight. Mmmmm, honey, we don't have any more reservations for the day. Uh -huh. Nanny? A wedding group is coming in later on today and reserve the whole restaurant. We won't be accepting any reservations until tomorrow. Please, please tell me you're lying. I mean, if you would have called in yesterday, we could have fit you into one of our private rooms, but those are booked already. Sorry. Click. Yo sl slowly placed his phone back down and rolled back to Anna to see her face red with anger. Uh, listen, Anna. Yo? Wanna order pizza? Anna's eyebrow twitched four times in annoyance. A few hours later. Eh, so the guy's still asleep? Said Kisame. Yes. Muttered Kuroka, sitting on the counter and playing with a ball of yarn, he really used up a lot of his energy these past few days and needs to recover so he might stay in a coma-like state for a while. Must be nice being able to control how long you sleep. Muttered Kisame, I'm thirsty. I wonder what's in the fridge. Protein shakes. Shouted Lee, appearing out of nowhere. Damn it. Shouted Kisame, what the fuck, Rook? Why are you scaring me like that? I just wanted you to enjoy one of my many protein shakes I've made for everyone, see? Said Lee, opening the refrigerator door to reveal that the fridge was filled with protein shakes in bottles, these will last us for a couple of days. What the where's my orange juice? Shouted Kisame. 
Even though orange juice is good for you, the orange juice you had, Mr. Kisame, wasn't so good. Sunny D is fake orange juice. Explained the exercise freak. What about my milk? Cried out Kuroka with comical tears. I used that to make the shakes. Thanks for that, Kuroka-sama. Said Lee with a wink. I'm going to kill him. Muttered the Nekashu. Right behind ya. Kisame grabbed same head and pointed at the shivering rook. Now, now. Said Orochimaru, entering the kitchen in a gray robe, it's too earlier in the morning for all of this noise. If Lee wants to make his protein shakes then where's my coffee maker? I threw it out because the caffeine in the coffee beans isn't healthy. Explained Lee. Orochimaru exited the kitchen but not before saying, you can kill him now. Now. The evil laughs of Kisame and Kuroka filled the house as they slowly crept up to the shivering Lee. The sound of someone knocking on the door entered Orochimaru's ears, drawing him away from the pleasant screams of Lee. He opened the door, and he raised an eyebrow in surprise once he saw Sarawarg of all people. Sarawarg Bale. Said the snake man, what graces us with your presence? It's been a long time, Orochimaru. Said Sarawarg with a smile, his deep voice making him sound older than he was, seems like you still hold that same confidence as usual. Of course, it's who I am. Said Orochimaru with a chuckle however, I am curious on why you're here. Are you here to challenge us for another raiding game? If so, I think you know how that will end. Oh no. The bale said with a laugh, I'm not here for that. Even though I've improved over these past few months, I know I still won't be a challenge to you all. I just saved myself from adding another loss to my raiding game record. The real reason I'm here is to check up on Naruto-sama. Orochimaru did a take back at Serorg's words, you, you know Naruto-sama? Yeah, he's been helping me and my peerage train for a while. Said Serorg, he's been helping us out in the form of that little orange ball form of his. He's really given us some pointers on a few things as well as instructing us on fighting styles and magic concepts. He's been a big help. That's, it's just surprising because Naruto-sama hasn't mentioned training your peerage at all. Just this week, he's been focusing on recovering his body from his seal situation. I know. He's kept me updated on some of the things going on with him. It's tragic that he's gone through so much for no reason. Said Serorg. Serorg. So, you know everything about Naruto-sama and the reason why he was sealed? Asked Orochimaru. I do and it sickens me that someone of his caliber would still be subjugated for dating Leviathan-sama. I've always said that skill should judge one's class instead of blood. I want to change this system that devils live in so that everyone can have a chance at achieve their dreams. Said Serorg poetically. That's a nice dream. I'm sure it's one of the reasons why Naruto-sama likes you. Said Orochimaru. That's the main reason why I'm here. Is he okay? Yesterday he told us that he'd be gone for a while, but didn't disappear like he usually would. His orb form seemed to be flickering like he was running out of energy before fading away. I wanted to check on him to see if everything was all right. Said Serorg. He is sleeping right now. He's been asleep for a long time, actually. He fell asleep a few hours past midday yesterday, and he's still sleeping. Kuroka projected that he was recovering from all the energy he spent through with his own training. He can't move around without the assistance of someone else, currently. Naruto-sama is trying to bring his body back to its peak, but he's pushing himself too much too soon. Explained Orochimaru. That makes sense. I guess I won't be able to see him then. Said Serorg with a sigh however, I did bring him a gift. Serorg summoned a magic circle and a small pickle jar phased in his rather large hands, I've heard him talking about pickles a lot for some unknown reason. I don't find them good, but I'm sure he'll enjoy these. He will. When he wakes up, he'll cry tears at this for sure. Said Orochimaru with a chuckle as he grabbed the jar, I appreciate you for this, Serorg. We should stay in touch. Agreed. 
While you are a creepy person, Orochimaru, you are also very wise and strong. I have a very large respect for you. Said Serorg with a bow. No bows are needed, but I thank you anyway. Said Orochimaru, I will tell you this, I know of your mother's sickness. Serorg's head snapped up at Orochimaru in shock, she's put on a pretty good act on keeping it under the ropes, but you can't hide it from the eyes of the scientist. I've been working on a pill for her to take so she won't suffer from it any longer. Wow, really? Asked the shocked Serorg. Seems like you'll be getting that wish you from our raiding game. Said Orochimaru with a chuckle, there are perks for being my ally. I thank you. Shouted Serorg, bowing to Orochimaru again, I can't believe you're doing this for me. I will never forget this. Fufufu, rise, Serorg. I know this is something you've been worried about, so I just decided to do something about. All I want you to know that Naruto-sama has noticed and wants to protect you and those around you. You are currently under our care. I can't thank you enough, Orochimaru. Said Serorg, outstretching his hand to the snake man. Orochimaru chuckled creepily as he shook Serorg's hand, don't thank me, thank Naruto-sama. The next day. Kuo Academy. This opponent you will face. Sona said to Rias in her peerage, he's on a whole different level. Have you called for your brother's help? It was currently nighttime, and there was an invasion at Kuo Academy. During these last two days, Kiba, Issei, and Kaneko paired up with the church followers Zenovia and Irina to find the Holy Swords. However, it was revealed that all of this was just a bigger plot, led by Kokobiel, one of the leaders of the Fallen Angels, to renew the war between the three factions. His plan to kill Sona and Rias was going to be the trigger, and he would be able to have a nice weapon on his hands with the fused Excalibur shards. Rias' peerage and Sona's peerage were now gathered together to see how they wanted to handle the situation. I haven't. Said Rias, I believe that we should handle this ourselves. This is one of the leaders of the Fallen Angels, Rias. There is no handling this ourselves. We need some type of backup on this. Snap, snap, Sona. I support the ideal of calling Lucifer Sama. Said Akino, to Rhea Shock. Akino. We are not doing that. I will not trouble my brother without problems. Shouted the Gremory. Then what other option do we have? Akino shouted back, we cannot defeat a being at Kokobiel's level. He fought on the front lines during the Great War and still survived. We cannot handle someone on his level. Rias hissed at her, queen, but she knew that her words were true. They wouldn't be able to handle Kokobiel themselves, but who? An idea popped up in her head and she turned back to the group, we can always call them. Naruto's Peerage House. So should I eat the chocolate protein shake or the strawberry protein shake? Muttered Lee, looking at his collection of shakes that invaded the fridge, so many choices. I don't know how to decide it. Suddenly, a magic seal appeared beside his ear, Lee, can you hear me? The voice of Rias rang from the seal. Oh, Rias. How nice it is to receive a call from you. Are you calling for training? Asked the green beast. No, Lee, we need Naruto-sama's help. Can you reach him for us? Asked Rias. No, sorry Rias, but I can't. Naruto-sama is still sleeping right now and can't fight. He's recovering from his body conditioning. Said Lee. Well, is Orochimaru there? Or maybe even Kizam actually, don't get Kisame, get Orochimaru. Yash. I'll get to him soon. Rias listened to Lee running up the stairs and seemingly kicking a door down, Yash. Mr. Orochimaru. Rias needs you. Lee, what did I tell you about kicking down door in the house? Grumbled Orochimaru with a menacing glare. I forgot. Sorry. Said Lee with a head scratch. Orochimaru? Are you there? Asked Rias. Yes, I'm here, princess. What is it? He asked. We need your help. 
Coca Beale, one of the leaders of the Fallen Angels, has invaded, invaded our school, and we can't handle him alone. We need someone stronger like you. Orochimaru hummed for a while, thinking about an answer, I don't think I can do that, princess. If Coca Beale is here, I'm staying here to guard Naruto-sama. He is in a semi-coma and can't defend himself right now. I need to be here to protect him. Please, Orochimaru. We need you. If you or Kisame or anybody doesn't come, he'll destroy Kuo and kill us. Pleaded the girl. Damn it. Muttered Orochimaru, running a hand through his long hair, Lee can't handle Kokobil, how's still recovering as well. I don't trust Kisame to finish the fight cleanly, Kuroka and I are guarding Naruto-sama. What about Anna and Yo? Shouted Rias, they're strong, right? They can handle him. Both Orochimaru and Lee looked at each other for a second before he replied, Yo and Anna are currently occupied. They're on a date. A date isn't more important than monster trying to restart the Great War. Link me to them. She yelled. If you insist. Said a wary Orochimaru. Same time. Aronia de Takazawa. I hate wearing suits. Said Yo, tugging at his collar. He was wearing a simple black suit with a white dress shirt and black tie. He borrowed one of Orochimaru's suits and it fit him well, so he stuck with it. You look handsome. Said Anna in her usual monotone voice. She was wearing an elegant, short, dark blue kimono with long sleeves that had a light blue trim at the end. She wasn't wearing her red bandana, so her hair was fully exposed, its golden color shining even in the dim lighting of the restaurant. Thanks. Yo said with a chuckle. The two stepped up to the front desk which was managed by two workers, Hello, my name is Yoasakura. I have a reservation here for the night. Yes, Asakura-sama. We have been expecting you. Said one of the ladies at the front desk, Follow me, please. Yo grabbed Anna's hand and followed the lady throughout the restaurant, passing by many tables that were filled with men and women in formal attire. The two followed the lady into a elevator and stayed there for a while before it opened up on top of the roof, where there were five waiters holding different bottles of wine for the couple. Anna raised an eyebrow at the scene. They were the only ones on top of the roof, but it was decorated with white flowers along the railings on the roof and the floor was littered with candles, you really went all out today. I had to, of course. Said Yo with a small smile, while leading his fiancée to the table in the middle of the roof, I've got to make an impression on the most beautiful girl in the world. Anna blushed slightly and gripped Yo's hand a little tighter. He led Anna to her chair and pushed it forward for her before sitting in his own chair. Wine. Asked one of the waiters. Sure. Thanks. Yo said. The man nodded and poured red wine into Anna and Yo's wine glass. The other waiters handed out the menu and explained the specials for the night and all the options that the couple could choose from. Well then, we'll leave you two alone for a while so you can decide on what to eat. Said the man waiter. They all bowed at the couple before slowly making their exit down a set of stairs. This is nice. Said Anna, looking up at the dark sky and stargazed, we haven't done anything like this in a long time. And we'll be here as long as you want. Said Yo, grabbing Anna's hand and giving it a light squeeze, tonight's your night, and there isn't anything in the world that'll interrupt us. Anna's smile quickly transformed into a frown, don't say that. Why? Asked a confused Yo. Because every time you say something like that, you jinx it, and then something happens. Just like how we've tried to get married, but something always happens. Said Anna with a small glare. Okay. I'll give you that, but it wasn't my fault that the zoo animals got out and invaded the city that one time, that was crazy. Yo said with a chuckle. Anna couldn't help but smile, and that time when we tried to get married on the beach, but then tide came and a flooded the wedding set up? That was crazy. Yo said with a laugh, when everything settled down, everyone was covered in seaweed. That's something I'll never forget. Anna actually giggled. 
It was a small one, but she definitely did it, I remember the time when we tried to get married at Disney, but all the people dressed up as Mickeys were actually planning to rob us. Now that, that was my fault. I thought that dude outside of the gas stations was legit. Said yo, scratching the back of his head, guess I won't be doing anything like that again. I'm just glad we're here tonight. Said Anna. And nothing's going to interrupt us. Yeah. Nothing's going to. Suddenly, a gremory magic seal appeared on their table, yo. Anna. Are you there? Please respond. Rias? Said yo, highly confused. Yo. Kuo Academy is being attacked by Kokobiel, one of the leaders of the Grigori. He plans to kill Sona and I so that he can restart the Great War. We can't handle him by ourselves. We're losing the battle now as we speak, so please come and help. Shouted the girl in desperation. You. Yo looked up at Anna, and he wished he didn't, because Anna was staring blankly at Yo as if her soul left her body, leaving nothing but a husk, can't you guys die, like, some other day. You have to come help. A measly date isn't more important than this. We won't be able to hold them off for long. I mean. Yo scratched the back of his head, don't you think that Cocobiel is a nice person? Maybe he'll come back tomorrow? Yeah, ask him to attack tomorrow. Any time and I'll come through and help. Doesn't that sound good? Yo, please. Anna, please convince him to help. We need Dash Rias was cut off as the communication seal disappeared, leaving Anna and Yo in an awkward silence. Anna. Anna. Anna jumped up out of her seat and grabbed Yo by the collar of his suit with so much force, she pulled him out of his chair and held him in the air his feet dangling over the floor, every fucking time. Anna, wait. I can handle tea. No. She shouted uncharacteristically, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go and handle this. You are going to stay here and wait for me. I will be back in exactly ten minutes ten fucking minutes. And I'll finish this guy off myself. You will sit right here and go nowhere. Do you understand me? Why yes, but calm down Anna. When you get too mad. I don't care about that anymore. She dropped you on the ground and summoned a magic circle under her, order me that fish plate, and don't add any parmesan cheese shit to it. She gave him one last glare of death before disappearing. Damn, that was hot. Kuo Academy. Coca Beal, one of the most powerful fallen angels in the world, had tilted once he saw an unknown magic circle in the middle of the makeshift battlefield, eh what's this? Did you call for backup, sister of Satan? He asked Rias. Rias' tired eyes looked up in hope as Anna appeared in between them and Cocobiel, Anna, where's yo at? I'm mad at you right now, so shut up. Anna dismissed Rias harshly, why do you all look so defeated? You have minimal damage done to you other than Kuroka's sister. She has a very large stab wound in her stomach. She said while looking to Kaneko who was currently being tended to by Asia. He did it, Anna. Said Issei, pointing towards a smirking Kokobiel, he said that God was dead, and he hurt Kaneko. God is dead? Asked Anna, a little shock in her voice. However, her surprise, her surprised look easily went back to her angry glare, I don't care about that. I'm a devil now, and even when I was human, I would have been damned just because of my abilities as a shaman. All I care about now is killing you. She said to Cocobiel. Oh, and who are you, little lady? Asked Cocobiel. Anna Kayoyama, soon to be Anna Asakura. She stated with confidence, because of your appearance, I've had to leave my future husband at the restaurant that we were currently at because I got a call that you were creating a disturbance. And you plan on killing me? He asked. Yes. You've pissed me off and I have around eight minutes to finish you off. She said. Her two Shikigami, Zenki and Goki, appeared beside her, with Goki clenching his large battle axe, in the name of Naruto Bale, you shall die here. Naruto Bale? Said Kokobiel, you mean Naruto Bale, the compass needle of victory? 
You're his servant. The compass needle of victory? Said Issei, Naruto-sama has a nickname? Naruto-sama's main weapon of choice was his power of destruction in the shape of needles. They would enter his opponent's body and imploded, destroying their joints. It was said that wherever he would point his needles, it would be in the direction of victory, hence the name. Explained Anna however, I don't use needles to fight I use spirits. Ah, a shaman then. Said Kokobiel, well then, come and show me your strength, shaman. Show me what it takes to defeat me. Issei, you're with me. Said Anna, summoning her wings and floating with Kokobiel, I'm going to make this one quick. You talk heavily girl. You have my interest. Come. He yelled. Anna Kayoyama, low-class devil slash shaman, bishop, with Issei Hayadu, low-class devil, pawn x8. Versus. Kokobil fallen angel. I'll be the main attack, and you'll be the support. She whispered to Issei, I want you to charge your boosted gear to its max and go full power. I'll stall him and protect you while you power up. That so sounds like a lot of work on your end. Said Issei with worry, don't you think that I should enter the battle with you now? I can charge up while fighting him. No, you're too weak to do something like that now. He is one of the leaders of the fallen angels. He's strong enough to finish you in an instant. Stay back and let me handle him. She demanded with no room for debate. Through making your game plans? Asked Kokobiel arrogantly. He raised his arm up and an army of golden light spears appeared and flew toward the duo. Zenki. Said Anna to her guardian. Zenki, the red Shikigami, jumped in front of everyone on and summoned a large magic circle that blocked all of the light spears protecting them from harm. When the hailstorm of spears ended, Zenki disabled his shield and rocketed towards Kokobiel with Goki following. Interesting. Shouted Kokobiel as he caught the punch that Zenki aimed for him. He summoned a light blade and blocked the overhead chop Goki had prepared for the fallen and threw the both away in a show of strength, you have to do more to damage me. He yelled. Anna stretched out her hand and summoned a red magic shield, glitter. And a red smoke cloud smoke and glitter filled the air. Kokobiel, Anna, Issei, and both of the Shikigami were caught in the dust cloud and their vision was hindered. What are you doing? Asked Issei. Zenki and Goki can see through the smoke cloud. We've trained for this. Muttered Anna, crossing her arms and closing her eyes. She used her mind's eye to see through both the eyes of Goki and Zenki, who were both headed towards Kokobiel. Zenki was coming in from the front while Goki was slowly making his way behind Kokobiel. What a weak attempt at trying to lower my guard. Laughed Kokobiel as he dodged another punch from Zenki. The two entered an intense battle of com combat as they went back and forth, throwing punch after punch and countering everything. You're good, Kokobiel said with a smirk at the red Shikigami. Zenki didn't say anything and focused on trying to overpower Kokobiel, but the villain was living up to his title as one of the most powerful fallen angels ever. He caught both of Zenki's fists and held them with an extreme amount of force. The Shikigami started to groan, making the fallen smirk at his pain, but your moves are too basic for someone of my level. Suddenly, Goki appeared behind the two with his battle axe ready to slash through Kokobiel. Anticipating the move, Kokobiel fluttered his wings and flew above where the attack was supposed to land, but he used his amazing strength to also pull Zenki where he once was. Goki grunted as he chopped his partner in half. Ha! Too bad for him! Laughed the fallen as he flew up and out of the red smoke screen. Anna clicked her tongue on the of her mouth in anger at arrogant look that he was giving her. Are you sure that you don't need my help? Asked Issei. No. Stay there and wait. I know what I'm doing. She said stoically. One of your little friends is gone. If I can kill one, don't you think I can kill the other? Kokobiel asked. Shut up. Muttered Anna, stretching her hands towards Kokobiel again. The red smoke screen that Kokobiel exited suddenly moved upwards like it was alive and surrounded him again. 
Now out of the smoke screen, Goki and Zenki were revealed to everyone. The top and bottom parts of Zenki were glowing white before the closed in on each other fused together, healing him. Go. Said Anna and the two followed her order and entered the smoke screen, confronting Kokobiel again. Goki threw his battle axe at Kokobiel, but he blocked it by using his wings as a shield. Zenki blitzed at him and used his stubby, right leg to kick Ko Kokobiel. The fallen grunted in surprise and pain as he noticed that Zenki's strength had increased from before however, his wings to the brute of the attack, and was only pushed back somewhat. Both Shikigamis were in front of Kokobiel and punched him directly in the face at the same time. The dark angel flew out of the smoke screen from the force of the blows. He speared his massive wings out as an air break and recovered from the attack. However, he wasn't given a break as the two ogre-like Shikigamis appeared again in front of Kokobiel in a burst of speed. Whoa! Said Issei as he watched the two guardians of Anna face off against Kokobiel in the skies. The two were keeping up with the much more experienced angel, even getting a few good hits off of him. This shit isn't over. Said Anna, commanding her smokescreen to cover the three again. This is getting annoying. Shouted Kokobiel as he kicked Zenki away. Goki opened his palm and his battle axe flew back into it, with the axe part point down to the ground. In a burst of strength, Goki lifted the axe upwards, intending to chop off Kokobiel's outstretched leg. Kokobiel desperately spun in the air in order to dodge the attack and succeeded in saving his leg. However, one of his wings was cut in half by the axe, causing him to cry out in pain. Now. Shouted Anna suddenly. Zenki appeared behind the screaming angel and wrapped his powerful arms around him. Goki flew out of the smoke screen safely and flew towards Anna. He opened his mouth and a large red beam of magic shot out of it and towards the smoke screen. When the laser-like beam made contact with the smoke screen, it exploded in a massive display of fire. Holy shit! Shouted Issei as he crossed his arms over his head to protect himself. The winds were fierce, and it was slowly pushing the boy back. Anna, however, was watching the explosion with a calm face, her kimono flowing violently as the winds pushed past her. That had to do something to him. She said. Yeah, no shit. Said Issei, floating back to Anna's side, did you have to go that far though? You could have damaged the school. I don't care. Plus, even if I did, I'm sure Rias or the Citri girl would do something about it. Said Anna, focusing on the silhouette in the middle of the black cloud from the explosion. Kokobiel stretched out his wings with such force, all the smoke disperses, revealing that he was burned in multiple parts of his body and his cloak tattered and on fire. The angry face he had spoken volumes as he pointed his finger at Anna. I'm going to kill you. Now. Instantly, he quick summoned a light spear that phased through the air in such speed that it was almost invisible. Anna's eyes widened and pushed Issei out of the way, while Goki jumped in front of Anna. The spear shot clean through Goki like he was nothing and slashed at Anna's side, the pain forcing her mouth open as she screamed in pain. Anna! shouted Issei as he held her close to him. Kokobiel laughed at the two as he levitated in the air. Goki had long disappeared after Kokobiel's spear went through him like an arrow, and Zenki was destroyed by the explosion. Your screams of pain feel with me joy. Laughed Kokobiel as he summoned a massive light spear over the duo, while this was fun, I can't let someone who damaged me so much live. I'll fucking kill you, you fucking bastard. Shouted Issei as he held up boosted gear. However, before he could active his power, Anna held up her hand, stopping him. What's wrong, Anna? Let me beat his fucking face in for hurting you. No, this is my fight. I don't want you involved anymore. She finished with a gasp of pain. You can't fight anymore. Yelled a concerned Anna, you would kill me if I allowed you to keep him going. You've done enough. He injured and I've powered up a lot. I think you'll need that power for later. Said Anna, glancing to her right. Issei did the same, but he couldn't see anyone in the surrounding area. She focused back on Kokobiel and gripped her injury with left hand.
and, I want to do this for myself. But why? He asked. She grunted as he let go of her. To show that I'm not as evil as I once thought, I want to protect others too. She whispered. Mama. Anna sighed and clenched her right fist in anger. Cocobiel was smirking at the injured girl as he started to lower his hand down, causing the massive light spear to plummet to the ground. Mama. The deep voice in Anna's head spoke again. Yes. She said out loud. Issei raised an eyebrow at Anna in confusion, wondering who she was talking to. Do you want me to kill him for you? Asked the voice in her head, you were on a date with Papa. I want you to go back with him. Plus he hurt you. Anna glared at Cocobiel, I hate you so much right now. Said Anna, that last shot was cheap. I could have dodged that if the pervert wasn't here. Making excuses now? How lame. Muttered Cocobiel, I guess you really don't have anything else left to offer. I enjoyed this for a while, but now it's time to die. He yelled and threw the massive spear at Issei and Anna. Mama! Shouted the voice, let me save you. You're stronger than this, Mama. Stop holding back. I don't want to go crazy. She said. What are you talking about? We need to run. She ignored Issei and started to gather her magic. A red veil of aura surrounded Anna, but it was mainly focused on her forehead. She started to growl, similar to a beast, as her magic levels continued to rise. The focal point, her forehead, grew a small red dot that was growing larger over time. Whatever you're doing, it's too late now. That spear is impossible to block. Shouted Cocobiel, mentioning the slow-moving projectile. Anna growled again and started to claw at her face as if she was in pain. Her magic was running rampant around her like dangerous waves. What are you doing? We have to leave. Run. She muttered to him, I'll handle him. No, no. I won't let you die while trying to prove a point. He yelled. Goki appeared and pulled the screaming Issei away. She made sure to add more magic into Goki's body, so that even he could handle Issei's enhanced strength thanks to the boosted gear. She gritted her teeth as all of her magic focused into her forehead, entering it with remorse. Aha! She shouted as a red horn started to grow out of her forehead. Everyone, even Cocobiel, looked on in interest at Anna's new body part. I'm coming! shouted the voice inside of Anna's mind. A massive magic circle appeared in front of Anna that was comparable to Cocobiel's light spear in size. What is that? said Cocobiel, generally curious as to what Anna was doing. Suddenly, a large, red foot stepped out of the magic seal, surprising everyone. Then, it suddenly vanished in a blitz of speed. Only Cocobiel was able to keep up with the massive being and watched as it brought its large hands together and slammed them against his light spear, destroying in an impressive show of force. What on earth? Cocobiel backed away slightly when the eyes of the behemoth landed on him. The beast was a giant red ONI packed with muscle. It was wearing a white shirt with a menacing, glowing green face on it. On his feet was a pair of white boots, matching his shirt. The giant flexed his muscle and gripped his fist, also flashing the pair of chain cuffs around its wrist. You hurt mama. Muttered the ONI. ONI. Gasped out Anna. Her red horn was still present, and she looked tired from all the energy that she used, kill him. Cocobiel hardly had time to block the fist of ONI with a magic shield. The shield cracked before being destroyed completely by the force of the giant. ONI disappeared and then reappeared behind Cocobiel and kicked him down into the ground. Damn it! shouted Cocobiel from his personal crater in the ground. I can't move as fast because I'm still injured. How can something so big move so fast? You hurt mama. ONI said again, appearing over Cocobiel, it's time to die. Die. Cocobiel summoned a barrage of light spears at ONI but he blocked or dodged them all in an impressive show of speed and power. 
Kokobil hurtled out of his prison and flew out at Oonai with a light sword and stabbed Oonai in the chest. Gah. The Oonai said. Kokobil grinned and ripped right the Oonai, tearing through its body and exiting through its back. Another weakling you summoned. You displease me, little girl. Said Kokobil to Anna. Anna gritted her teeth at Kokobil with a glare filled with hatred. I want you dead now. She shouted, Oonai, finish him now. The hole in Oonai instantly recovered thanks to the large amount of magic it had. It spun around and outstretched its arms and glared down at unsuspecting Kokobil. Kokobil instincts told him to turn around, but he was too late. Oonai's hands zoomed through the air until they were both mashed together with Kokobil in the middle. The thunderclap was so strong, it sounded like thunder hitting the earth. A shockwave of wind blew through the area, knocking down trees and damaging some of the nearby buildings. An impressive amount of blood flowed from in between its palms and landed on the ground with a sick splat. Anna cringed as a wave of pain went through her body. Oh and I started to slowly disappear until it was fully gone, freeing the crushed fallen angel from its grasp. Cocobiel plummeted to the ground, back into the same crater that he was once and not too long ago. I'm not a monster. Muttered Anna as she summoned a magic circle and disappeared in it. Aronia de Takazawa. She's two minutes late. Muttered Yo with worry. He was still in his same seat waiting for his fiancé to return. He was worried because Anna was never late. She hated tardiness with a passion and despised anyone that had a tendency to be tardy, so it was worrying for her to be late for anything, especially coming back from her battle with Cocobiel. While Yo wanted to go and follow his fiancé, he was scared of the consequences behind that action. She told him to stay put, so that's what he did. I hope she dash you was cut off as Anna appeared from a magic circle. She landed on her feet, but she was about to fall over on the ground. Yo, using his blinding speed, caught Anna from hitting the floor, Anna. What happened? You love me, right? Tears were pouring out of her eyes as she placed a hand on Yo's cheek, no matter what, right? You still love me? Yo's eyes widened once he noticed Anna's horn. However, he focused back on his future wife, of course, Anna. I don't care about anything else. I love you, and there is nothing that can change that. Even if I'm a monster? She whispered. Anna, you aren't a monster. I've told you this for as long as I've known you. You are not a monster, Anna Kayoyama. You are a person with feelings, and I want to be with you for the rest of my life. Her tears increased as she clenched his shirt and cried into his stomach. Yo was rubbing her back and soothing her, telling her everything was okay. Anna continued to cry and Yo held her closer to him, protecting her from the cold winds. Her hair fluttered with the wind, but Yo was concerned about that. I don't care, Anna. He whispered, I don't care. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfictions. Looking forward to having you on board again.